Water is a precious and vital resource that we often take for granted. But did you know that water scarcity affects more than 40% of the global population? And that number is projected to rise. One, that's why it's important to use water efficiently and wisely, not only to save money and energy, but also to protect the environment and ensure water security for future generations. In this video, we will introduce you to some of the best practices for water efficiency that you can implement in your home, workplace, or community. These practices are based on the recommendations of the U.S. Department of Energy and the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, which have developed 14 water efficiency best management practices to help agencies and individuals increase water efficiency and meet federal requirements. The first step to improve water efficiency is to have a water management plan. A water management plan is a document that outlines your water use, your water efficiency goals, and the actions you will take to achieve them. A water management plan can help you identify and prioritize water saving opportunities, measure and track your water use and savings, and communicate your water efficiency achievements to stakeholders. The second step is to educate and involve your employees, residents, or school children in water efficiency efforts. By raising awareness and providing information and incentives, you can motivate and empower people to adopt water efficient behaviors and practices. You can also become a Water Sense Partner, which is a voluntary program that offers tools and resources to help you promote water efficiency and recognize water saving products and programs. The third step is to conduct audits, leak detection, and repair. Audits are assessments of your water use and efficiency that can help you identify areas of improvement and potential savings. Leak detection and repair are essential to prevent water loss and waste, as leaks can account for up to 20% of your water use. You can use the WaterWiser drip calculator to estimate how much water leak wastes. The fourth step is to implement water-efficient landscaping and irrigation. Landscaping and irrigation can consume a large amount of water, especially in arid regions. You can reduce your outdoor water use by choosing native and drought-tolerant plants, applying mulch and compost, and using rain barrels and cisterns to collect and reuse rainwater. You can also use water-efficient irrigation systems and devices, such as drip irrigation rain sensors, and smart controllers that deliver water only when and where needed. The fifth step is to upgrade your toilets and urinals. Toilets and urinals can account for almost a third of an average home's indoor water consumption, and even more in commercial and institutional settings. You can save water and money by replacing your old and inefficient toilets and urinals with high-efficiency models that use 1.6 gallons per flush or less. You can also install dual flush toilets that offer two flush options, or retrofit your existing toilets with flush valves or displacement devices that reduce the amount of water per flush. The sixth step is to upgrade your faucets and shower heads. Faucets and shower heads can account for about 15% of an average home's indoor water consumption, and more in hotels and other facilities. You can save water and energy by replacing your old and inefficient faucets and shower heads with water sense labeled models that use 1.5 gallons per minute or less. You can also install faucet aerators or flow restrictors that reduce the water flow without affecting the water pressure. The seventh step is to optimize your steam boiler systems. Steam boilers are used for heating, cooling, and process applications in many industries. Steam boilers can consume a lot of water and energy and require regular maintenance and treatment to operate efficiently and safely. You can save water and energy by optimizing your steam boiler systems, such as by installing meters and submeters, conducting regular inspections and tune-ups, reducing blowdown frequency and volume, recovering condensate, and using alternative water sources. The eighth step is to eliminate single-pass cooling equipment. Single-pass cooling equipment is any equipment that uses water to cool or remove heat from a process or equipment, and then discharges the water to the drain. Single-pass cooling equipment can waste a lot of water and energy, 
and is often unnecessary or inefficient. You can save water and energy by eliminating single-pass cooling equipment, such as by replacing it with air-cooled or closed-loop systems, or by reusing the cooling water for other purposes. The ninth step is to manage your cooling tower systems. Cooling towers are devices that use water to cool or remove heat from a building or process. Cooling towers can consume a lot of water and energy and require regular maintenance and treatment to prevent scaling, corrosion, and biological growth. You can save water and energy by managing your cooling tower systems, such as by installing meters and submeters, conducting regular inspections and tests, optimizing cycles of concentration, controlling blowdown and drift, and using alternative water sources. The tenth step is to upgrade your commercial kitchen equipment. Commercial kitchen equipment is any equipment that uses water to prepare, cook, or clean food in restaurants, cafeterias, or other food service facilities. Commercial kitchen equipment can consume a lot of water and energy, and often operates at less than optimal efficiency. You can save water and energy by upgrading your commercial kitchen equipment, such as by replacing your old and inefficient dishwashers, pre-rinse spray valves, steam cookers, and ice machines with Energy Star or Water Sense labeled models that use less water and energy. The eleventh step is to upgrade your laboratory and medical equipment. Laboratory and medical equipment is any equipment that uses water to conduct experiments, tests, or procedures in research, healthcare, or educational facilities. Laboratory and medical equipment can consume a lot of water and energy, and often operates at less than optimal efficiency. You can save water and energy by upgrading your laboratory and medical equipment, such as by replacing your old and inefficient autoclaves, sterilizers, washers, and reverse osmosis systems with more efficient models that use less water and energy. The twelfth step is to optimize your other water-intensive processes. Other water-intensive processes are any processes that use water for purposes other than cooling, heating, or cleaning, such as manufacturing, mining, agriculture or power generation. Other water-intensive processes can consume a lot of water and energy, and often have opportunities for improvement and innovation. You can save water and energy by optimizing your other water-intensive processes, such as by installing meters and submeters, conducting regular audits and assessments, implementing process changes or improvements, and using alternative water sources